Right. So what is it about complexity that could give us some deep understanding of what it's all about? So complexity is a hard thing to define. It's sort of what distinguishes from randomness or nothingness. It's some kind of structure. And the remarkable thing is that we see it sort of emerge. We see it spontaneously form everywhere around us. And my best example of a complex system is that it's something that has an unanticipated behavior where the whole is much more than the sum of its parts. So it's hard to think of it more from the early universe. It's easier to think of it with a contemporary example. Mm -hmm. So we might think about a single ant, and that single ant is so limited in what it can do. And then you have 10 ants. They're still limited, but they can start building pheromone trails and interacting with each other and making patterns. And then once you have a whole ant colony, they can do remarkable behaviors. They can have hierarchies and structures, social structures, and they can really transform the earth around them. So we see some kind of emergence that the end result is much bigger than just the sum of the individual parts. So that's sort of what I view as complexity, is that some kind of structure comes out that we couldn't predict from the individual elements. So even if you know everything potentially about the individual part, you never could predict what happens when many of them come together. The collective behavior mm -hmm. of many of them together. Good. So how can we then take that further to understand um, what, we, what we all try to do? understand about the world. Uh, you deal with complex adaptive systems. What is a complex adaptive system? So a complex adaptive system is one that has this complexity, it has structure and organization, that often was self-organized. So there wasn't a central agent in charge of controlling how things evolve. So there's no governing body trying to give evidence of how to move forward. Things just interact in a local manner, and we see this structure form on its own. So how does complex adaptive systems further the idea of complexity? So complexity is the difference from disorder. It's structure that emerges, and we often see that it's self-organized. So we see that there's not a central agent that's trying to control or manipulate things. It's sm simple individual things interacting in a local manner, and collectively they give rise to these emergent behaviors that we wouldn't have anticipated. In the same time, no system lives in isolation, right? So each system is part of a bigger picture and a bigger picture till we get to the universe, and then we don't even know where the boundaries are. So the landscape is constantly changing. So these complex systems interacting in a local, simple manner need to also respond to changes in the environment or changes in the larger system. So that's how we think of a complex adaptive system. Because they're adapting to their local environments. So we see change all around us all the time, and they're able to move forward. And what does move forward mean? And, and, and are we talking about, normally it sounds like we're talking about living things, but a complex adaptive system doesn't have to be living, right? That's right. And how I view it is that there is this landscape that's formed by the rest of the systems that make up the whole universe. And those can be dynamic and changing all around us, like we see weather and cultural evolution. So we always see that the landscape is changing. So even if a system isn't sentient, it's not adamant, there's still going to be some systems that are more functional for that particular landscape than others. So we see sort of a competition going on amongst different systems that have slight variations, and they can adapt at different rates. And as the landscape changes, one might be more fit than the other. So there doesn't have to be some kind of intelligence guiding things. It can also be sort of a random walk through a landscape with fitness, fitter things persisting and getting to reproduce. And again, these fitter things that are reproducing don't have to be living things. They don't have to be living things, no. I think there's some really interesting work to come in the next few years of looking at how game theory can play into looking at evolution as well. So a system that doesn't need to be living, as long as we have a few systems that have some variation, they're exploring some kind of landscape. And we often see that uh, two systems cooperating get more function than they do separately. What's an example of that? So we can think about a symbiotic relationship. So we have two individuals. They don't have to be living. And on their own, they have some functionality. You bring them together, and suddenly, collectively, they're better off. So uh, 
great example is living. It's from biology where we can think about hosts and the creatures that cooperate with them. So um, the uh, sharks and the fish that clean their scales. So they both get some mutual benefit from interacting. So if the shark evolved on its own, perhaps it would be more fit for the next thousand years, but eventually it's going to reach its limits. So by maybe giving up a little bit of its evolution right now and helping the fish move forward as well, they both win in the end. So there's some interesting game theoretic underpinnings that we can look at the evolution of cooperation and how maybe not optimizing for myself as much as I can in a greedy manner right now, I'll give up a little bit and help someone else and we'll both end up winning ultimately. So what would be the deep understanding of complexity and uh, complex adaptive systems in us understanding what it's all about? So this is a great question. Uh, I think that it also ties into the concept of entropy. So if we want to just look at the rules of the universe, the laws of physics, we know that we're going to observe disorder increase. And this is still a puzzle because we understand that uh, things from open systems. So it's very hard for us to understand a closed system. We don't even know what the boundary would be. Is the boundary of what is the universe? Are there multiverses? So if we knew the whole boundaries of everything, we could make a closed system and we could look at entropy sloshing around back and forth and see some places getting more ordered, some places equally getting disordered. Our whole experience is only with open systems where we see energy fluxes. So we live in this open system. So we get a lot of low entropy energy bombarding us all the time. And we can take that and transform it and do work, whether it be mechanical work or transforming information or doing chemical work. So we take this low entropy energy, extract work from it, and radiate high entropy energy. And that's where we can build complexity. So we can do that work and we can order information and build hierarchical complex systems. And when you say we, we can do it ourselves or, or a plant does it with photosynthesis, yeah. takes the energy from the sun and it uses photosynthesis to create itself. And, and something very complex emerges. So by we, I mean the natural world. Yeah, right, 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 right. So it goes on around us all the time and has been for 13 billion years. And what I really am interested in is that this has been going on all over. And I feel we're at a point where these systems that have evolved in complex adaptive ways are really coming together in many more ways. So we're really seeing interdependencies increasing. And a great example for us as contemporary people is that our whole life relies on the functioning of interdependent complex systems. A lot of them are networks. So even us speaking now, we rely on uh, having internet communication, which relies on the power grid, which relies on water distribution networks and communication networks, et cetera, and the global financial markets. So all these independent systems that are complex adaptive systems in their own right are now coming together and we see a lot of emergent, unanticipated consequences from this. And I think it's very exciting, but I also see that it's very challenging. And eventually, there's going to be a point where the complexity is just too high and things will become unstable. And it's not clear where the entropy complexity trade-off will eventually end, but it does seem that things are going to get too complex to be sustainable and ultimately will collapse in some way. And you say that with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's really exciting and interesting. And, you know, nature is what it is and it's going to move forward. So it's interesting to, to accept that and look at the beauty of it.